Hello YouTube, this is the fourth tutorial in this series and this time we're going to be taking a look at the managed service class and creating a, a loop type of structure that will allow us to send off our keystrokes to string method as many times per day as we can without exceeding Gmail's maximum limit of 150 because if we send more than 150 emails per day then Gmail can say no more and we can now no longer send emails to ourselves. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a utility class that is going to be declared final because we don't need it to be extended and we're going to hide the constructor as well in this one. Uh, this class is only going to hold static methods. So the first one we're going to create is going to be global. Well, I mean global for Java. And it's going to return a string. And it's going to take in uh, the list of key storage things. The, the native keyboard stashes, that cache we created a while back. That is what this is going to take in as input. We're going to import the util one. So this is going to be a raw print. We're not going to do anything fancy with it. It's just going to look really ugly. Print out the you know raw to string, and I mean yeah, that's what it'll return. So we're going to create the string builder uh, and call it SB for a string builder. And then after that, we're going to just give it a title. And since remember we are sending this to that with that Gmail API that one class I can't remember what it's called the transport yeah well that my message that the transport sends is used to dealing with HTML documents so you can actually style this as a regular HTML document and you could bold stuff and italicize stuff make it look really fancy and pretty uh, but we're not gonna do that that's gonna be next tutorial for this one it's just gonna be a raw print and we're gonna add a new line that's the new line character for HTML as a self-enclosing VR tag. So we're going to do new line, raw stroke, data, new line, essentially what that means. Except, you know, we, we don't really need to put a new line for the first thing, but I don't know why I did. So then we're going to enhance for loop through the uh, storage keystrokes. And at each iteration, we're just going to append a um, the two string as you can see and that's all we're going to need and then the new line character which you can get a uh, crass form compatible new line character doing system dot line separator so then that's done so we're going to return the uh, string builders final string Now we're going to pop on down to the manage service class and create a thread. And so we're just going to declare a thread called service and then we're going to implement runnable so that we can pass in an instance of manage service to the thread. You could create an inner styled class, but we don't want to do that. I mean, it's preference. I think this looks more maintainable to do it this way, to initialize the thread passing in this and then giving it a nickname like managed service rather than the what I said earlier. So then we're going to start it and this is going to invoke the run method when we call start because each interface is expected to have a run method. So then we're going to create a timer and this timer is going to start at the very beginning of when we first create the thread. We are then going to create an infinite loop that is going to constantly check the difference between the start time and the current time in nanoseconds. We're going to divide this difference by 1 million because we're going to convert these nanoseconds into milliseconds. That way we don't have to do uh, a billion for a second we could just write a thousand for one second. 
Now we can set up our if statement to check if this elapsed time, which is again is just the difference of the current nano time minus the old time when we first started the timer, divided by a million. We're going to check if this is greater than 60,000, 60, which would be one minute in milliseconds, times 15, because we, if we send an email once every 15 minutes, then that'd be 100 emails every single day that we'd get full of keystrokes. So this is well under the 150 max by uh, Google's maximum. Now that we can ensure that sender.sendmail will only be called once every 15 minutes, we can call the method and invoke the sendmail that takes in a string and we're going to convert the string or we're going to convert the list of keystrokes into a string via that utility method. It was at this moment I realized that we need to create a getter for the key cache so we're going to need to pop into the uh, native keyboard class because that's where we're going to need to create the getter because that's where the key cache is and we can just type get control space and then it'll pop up and create the getter for us then we can pop back into the other one and get the key cache and obviously this throws the exception the throwable thing and if we uh, do this successfully then we're going to call the keyboards on send method which will just clear the keys but we only want to clear the key cache if it was sent successfully that's why we call that there and if it fails then we can call on fail which abs does absolutely nothing but hey, maybe you want to put a system.out.println sad emoticon when you do fail, or a happy emoticon if you fail, if you like failing. Either way, we're still going to need to reset the timer, send on fail or on whatever. After this try catch block, we're going to reset the timer so that we can again send another message or attempt to send another message in another 15 minutes. So at this point, we're going to change the condition rather than every 15 minutes to something like 30 seconds just so we can test out this and make sure it works, which it does work. I'm record doing the voiceover after it already works and it worked. So we're going to run the application, go into the main, click run and now I gotta start typing some stuff type type delete that weird auto generation and this is just some sample code so all these key events are being stored in a, the key storage class which can be accessed to the two string and you can take a look at the two string if you don't remember what it looks like but I mean it'll print out some pretty ugly stuff when you see it in bulk so that should be good enough. Now I'm going to head into the email and see what it looks like. This is my email to the password I never can remember because it's super weird and complicated so I spend quite some time trying to figure out where I wrote this down on a piece of paper I wrote it down on and then I have to make sure I get it right the first time so I type very slowly. Once I did finally get that thing all typed out, you can head over to the, I headed over to the Gmail, and you can see that we did in fact receive all that stroke data. And when I click on it, you can see all that nasty looking cryptic message. And the system dot line separator, of course, didn't do anything. You need to put the break tag if you want it to do a new line. But uh, you can see that it's just really ugly. And we can fix this later on in the series, next tutorial actually, make it look nice and human readable. But that's all for this video, thank you for watching, uh, like and subscribe if you did like the video, otherwise I'll see you next, no, I won't see you, I'll hear you hear me next time.